different people in the government, and they tend to have that very same assessment. I've talked to people in other parts of the country, same uh, takeaway, that, yeah, there'll be a few that will be just following orders, but most of the rest uh, realize I didn't take an oath to uphold Barack Obama or whoever else is president. I took an oath to uphold the Constitution. And that's the big stumbling block for any wannabe tyrant that most of those that they employ with guns aren't going to do something that they knowingly have seen is unconstitutional. And I think Waco and other tragedies like that have brought greater clarity to the understanding that a lot of our men under arms under, have seen. And, and I believe they would bring that to the table if anybody in government really went so far as to try to uh, impose uh, some kind of military arms solution in this country. Just don't think it's going to take. You're absolutely right. I'm going to let you go here in just a moment and go back to calls. Gunowners.org. Larry Pratt, the head of Gunners of America, is our guest. I, I raised this earlier. I remember getting you on 20 years ago, getting you on 16, 17 years ago, and you wouldn't do it. But I guess it was about 10 years ago, I begged you on air probably for the 10th time. I said, Larry, look, you know the NRA board's getting filled with some really bad people. They're not defending the Second Amendment. They're not getting aggressive. Heston has left. He was doing a great job. But they've gotten really soft since he you know, left and then died. And I know Ted Nugent's in there. He's great. Can you get your hardcore group, you know, the second largest group in the country, no compromises, Ron Paul has said, the only group at the time that was holding stuff back by just, just, just a hair, I said, can you go after the NRA and, you know, really explain some of the history of times they've done bad stuff to show their supporters that your real activism is in making sure this giant organization is truly in the fight. Because, you know, they're intimidating board members. They were doing all sorts of stuff behind the scenes. There's more than one way to skin a cat. They want our guns, folks, so they go after our representatives. And so you're the watchman on the wall, keeping them honest. You wrote a big article showing their good history and their bad history. You called for them to get hardcore. I don't remember the name of the article. Maybe you should uh, remind me. And they really changed in the next three, four years to be in a pretty good organization now overall. Uh, in my view, correct me if I'm wrong, but, but, but can you speak to that? Because I think the greatest accomplishment of gun owners is that in a gentlemanly way, you guys really kind of caused a positive coup uh, inside the NRA. Is that not accurate? Uh, there, I think there's some truth to that. And in any case, when they have a tendency any given time to go off the rails, gun owners has now gotten to the size that we can focus on the NRA itself as if they were just another politician, which sometimes they kind of behave like. And when they get enough heat from their own members, they behave just like another politician. And they come around to what it is that folks are asking them to do. Case in point was post Sandy Hook. Uh, the NRA was supporting an expansion of the background check, which is really nothing more than the uh, enabling the government to have a registration list of all gun owners. And they did a 180 on that when we asked our members to email and telephone a guy at the NRA. His phone must have turned to green smoke because a week after we started that campaign, they said, no, nope, we're against the uh, Toomey Mansion bill. We're against the expansion of the background check. Of course, they wrote the initial background check, but they backed off because they felt the heat. And like old Senator Dirksen was fond of saying, when I feel the heat, I see the light. What would you say about their overall composition now? Am I accurate in saying they're better than they were 10 years ago? Oh, definitely. There's much more an awareness that they are a Second Amendment organization. They continue to provide wonderful services for target shooting and all those kinds of shooting sports. But they understand that all that goes away if they don't defend the Second Amendment. And the Second Amendment requires an adversarial relationship with the federal government. The Second Amendment says, federal government, you can go here and no farther. And if you try, then the Second Amendment comes into play. Uh, uh, to put it a little bit more crudely, we'll point our guns at you if you try to act tyrannically. And that that's in the Declaration of Independence, in the Constitution, in the Bill of Rights. The war started over them coming to take the guns. 
It doesn't matter how many quack professors they pay from Bloomberg to write books claiming it wasn't about guns. It was all about self-defense. It's always about self-defense. It's always about being free. And to look at the NRA doing a lot better job today, we're finally on the offensive. We're not compromising. Uh, people understand, oh, I can't give in to you because you never give in. We're not really compromising. They were always pushing us, pushing us, pushing us. And now, as Democratic Party websites have admitted in, in news articles, radical groups like gun owners, the small extreme fringe, uh, in, in their words, is driving the NRA and driving Republican politics. And what do we do about them? Well, the truth is we're not radical. This is what America is. It's what it's founded on. Our forebears had to fight the biggest empire in the world that no one had ever defeated to have these rights, folks. It was paid for in buckets and buckets and buckets of blood and guts. And America isn't perfect, but compared to other nations, it's incredible. And I'm so proud of America, and I'm so proud of Larry Pratt and all the gun owners members. Everybody who isn't a member should go join today. If you're not a member, at least sign up for the free alerts. Because, folks, we have been on a razor's edge of losing this battle so many times. And Larry Pratt and his folks up on the hill every day have turned the tide. And so I don't do this with hardly any other guest. But I'm telling you, if you don't get behind Larry Pratt, Gun Owners of America, you are actually working for the enemy. It comes down to that. Larry Pratt, closing comment. Well, Alex, I want to thank you very much for that kind of an endorsement because that, that really means a lot. And I think if people will just realize that, yeah, there are only one voice and maybe it's only one email that's going to go to their one congressman. But when they're working with thousands of other people doing the same thing, that's what turns these big issues around our way. We have won and we can win. It just requires people putting their shoulder uh, to the oar, and you get enough shoulders on that oar, and it moves. Incredible. Well, thank you so much, Larry Pratt. We'll talk to you soon. Good to be with you. Thanks for having me on, Alex. You bet.